there's one thing that will really improve your work and that's to start keeping a sketchbook and a watercolour that's done out of doors very quickly and almost wet in wet all the way a child's um, pencil case which I've adapted with a little box of paints a little one of these little brushes that you can um, with water in the handle and I, this is all I take when I go overseas as well and then we can bring the hill down across that so that sort of puts it in its setting and then up here we've got another field heading up across the page I'm going to just take that below the, the chimney tops and there's a reason for that now I want these, this, these chimneys to be light against dark so if I bring this down just a little fraction I can use the dark of these trees here to show up the chimney poles. I might need something here to uh, give me a background. So that's more or less all the sketch, the initial drawing I need to do and as I say I'm not too worried about um, any mistakes I might have made because it's all going to be uh, obliterated soon anyway. This is going to give me the glow I need for um, sort of sunlight breaking through the clouds. A bit of warmth there with a bit of orange. And maybe some down here, a bit of this Naples yellow type of colour. So there's my nice glow in the sky. And I'm going to bring in some dark now to emphasise that. Now, I was saying earlier about your fingers and not uh, damaging them. Mm -hmm with the, um, the sandpaper and the secret is, is to make sure before you start to blend that you've got enough pastel on the page on the paper to um, to soften it you know you, you're working it into the paper rather than rubbing your finger onto the other hard sandpaper so this might look a bit dramatic but we'll we can tone it down in a, in a while, but it's quite nice to have a bit of drama now and again. It's not always uh, necessary to have a blue, blue sunny sky. And the beauty, of course, of the pastel is it's completely blendable. I'm going to make sure that um, I haven't got anything on my fingers to start with and then just start to blend it like this. Just take a bit of cloud through there as well. So I'm using it quite lightly, just stroking it on gently to get the effect of um, distant foliage. And then we'll bring some of it down like this. I'm going to bring in some other colours in a moment, but I want that to be quite distant. So I look for a little bit of purpley grey. Through here. So, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to bring this line of trees down behind the chimneys to give me a dark bit to, to work against. Getting close to our focal point now, so we can start getting a little bit more adventurous with the colours. So down here we're going to put in this acidy green, as if the field is just catching the light. And let's give that a, a sharper edge. Down here we'll have um, just a hint of this as well. That's dark on this side. The so light's coming this way, so hitting the end of here, and so this side is in shadow. Down to the eaves, because I want to leave a gap on that edge. Like a... If you just soften off the edge of um, where, where your work finishes, when you come then to draw over it, it's easier to get a sharp edge. And then a white pastel to outline the chimney. This is the bit that's catching the light, and then we've got another one down there catching this light. 
This one's yeah. a, a chisel ended number two, and you can just sharpen up the edges and tidy up the mess you've made. And not only can you do it on the, in this case, on the white, but you can also come in negatively behind with the dark and just tidy up any little mess there as well. So I'm just drawing it with a white to start with. And I'm using the blue-grey pastel pencil here now. But I'm also going to just introduce a bit of uh, pink. And maybe even a bit of red-grey, just for variety. And then I'll use the number six colour shaper to blend that together to give that dormer roof a little bit of character and a bit of colour. And then I'm using the the flat chisel edge just to hint at tiles. I have it so that it's coming out from behind this building. Just a few branches. I'm assuming this is all although this sketch was done in December, no, February. Um, I'm going to hint that it's more more like spring, like this time of year, really. So I'm just drawing in the, the branches there, and then a little bit of there's a lovely colour you get on spring foliage, sort of bursting buds, a red, and absolutely delightful. And I thought that would fit nicely just there by that. Uh, and it, again, it's a complementary of green, so it stands out quite nicely. On next, so this end, I'm going to put in this um, bright orange um, colour to start with. Uh, this is a, a wooden barn. And then we'll dull it down with some red-grey. And this is assuming, you see, that the light is catching it on that side. Now one, one or two of these boards is a bit broken, so I guess we'll just hint at a, a little bit of damage here. And especially at the base, sometimes they rot, rot away at the base. Down here with this lovely warm green. And the, the, the ground slopes right down like this, so let's put this in first. And a bit of blue in there, I think, a little bit of um, that one. To give the idea that it's all shadowy down mm -hmm. here. So, indicating the lie of the land with the strokes I'm making. That comes across in front of the barns and cool it down. I'm going to have a little bit of a blend now. Widen this out a little bit as it comes here. The important thing about pastel sticks is that they aren't just a point. Um, if you keep your paper on your pastels, you're never going to really progress. You need to use the whole length of the pastel. A little bit of um, charcoal now to uh, indicate the. Uh, the legs, which I'm going to blend a bit anyway. The warmth in the foreground helps you to go over. And I'm just gently stroking on this to get this like effect of the hillside. Ah, yeah. Move some of that down there. 